At Des Moines University Clinic, you'll find healthcare professionals with only one priority, you, the patient. Come see us for the very best in family medicine, physical therapy, podiatric medicine, and osteopathic manual medicine. Call today to schedule an appointment. Hello, my name is Josh Modrick, and I am a second year DO student with the DMU Oncology Club. And I'd like to take a few minutes today to talk to you about screening for cancer and why it's important for you. So what we want to talk about today are some of the more common cancers for the 50 or better age group and what the current recommendations for who should be tested and why. And uh, these are breast cancer, colon cancer, and prostate cancer. So what is screening and why is it important? These are tests that we do before you feel sick in order to catch diseases in an early state. This is important because many cancers can be noticed before they have the possibility to spread, which makes them easier to treat and more likely to be cured. And this plays an active role in improving your quality of life and peace of mind. So first we'll talk about screening for breast cancer. The United States Preventative Services Task Force recommends women ages 50 to 74 should get a mammogram every other year. After 75, the benefit to screening becomes less clear, and this is something you should discuss with your health care providers to decide if you want to continue screening. Symptoms of breast cancer to watch out for would be uh, new lumps in the breast or armpit, uh, increased density of the breast tissue, or dimpling of the skin, which is usually described as having the same texture as an orange peel. There are several methods that can be used to find breast cancers, and these include mammograms, MRIs, thermograms, and physical exams performed by a doctor. In the past, the self-breast exam used to be recommended for routine use, but this hasn't been shown to be beneficial. When a suspicious lump is found, then a tissue sample will be taken in order to determine what it is. Looking at the five-year survival rates, we can really see the benefit of detecting breast cancers early. Uh, when the tumor is found in the earliest stage, there's a 99% chance of it being cured after five years. And even once there's some spread to regional lymph nodes, there's still an 86% survival rate thanks to new treatment options. But this drops down to 27% once it has spread to other parts of the body. So it's really important that we find these as quickly as possible. Next, we'll talk about colon cancer. The current recommendations are that everyone age 50 to 75 should be screened for colon cancer. Some people may need to start earlier depending on their family history or other conditions. After 75 is when you should talk to your doctor about whether more testing will be beneficial for you. And the symptoms to look out for are unintentional weight loss, changes in your bowel habits, and blood in the stool. This can be either red or black, and also keep in mind that if you have bleeding after wiping, this could be instead a sign of hemorrhoids. There are many different ways to test for colon cancer, including colonoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, CT scans, testing for blood in the stool, the barium enemas, and DNA tests of the stool, which you may have seen advertisements for. They can be done at home and sent into a lab. But I really want to emphasize that the gold standard for colon cancer screening is the colonoscopy. Yes, nobody likes getting these done, but it's very beneficial because not only can it find cancers early, but it can also find polyps, which are growths that are not cancer, but they could become cancer if they continue to grow. And these polyps can be removed during the colonoscopy without needing any other procedures or treatments. So it's really a two for one in both detecting and preventing cancer. Uh, colonoscopy sh should be done every 10 years or every five years if you have a higher risk. And if you've never had one before, then you're most likely to benefit. And here again, you can see the benefit of screening in the survival rates going from 90% survival when detected early down to 71 and then down to just 14% if the cancer has spread before diagnosis. And then the last topic we'll talk about today is screening for prostate cancer. This screening is not generally recommended for everyone. Men should have a discussion with their doctor about the risks and benefits, and then make a decision about if and how often they want to be checked for prostate cancer. 
The symptoms that you should be looking out for at home would be difficulty urinating, frequent urination, blood in the urine, or new erectile dysfunction. The methods used for screening for prostate cancer include the digital rectal exam and testing for prostate-specific antigen in the blood. There are some issues with these tests, which is why they're not recommended for everyone. There are false positives. These tests can find conditions that are benign and not actually cancerous. And then another issue is overdiagnosis and overtreatment. Uh, many prostate cancers grow at a very slow rate, and they might never actually cause any problems. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell whether a particular tumor is going to cause problems or not. So if we find these tumors and treat them, we might actually be doing more harm than good. And you can see this reflected in the survival rates, where almost everyone with early stage prostate cancer will make it to five years, and it's only the later stages of the disease that start to affect survival and the quality of life. And our last point to take away is uh, over 50% of cancers can be prevented. There are several factors that are involved in causing cancers that can be controlled by eating a proper diet. Uh, you want to reduce alcohol intake, consume less processed meats, and eat lots of fiber. Uh, regular exercise can help prevent cancers, and any exercise is better than none. Uh, quit smoking, get vaccinated, and then get these screening tests done to detect the cancers before they spread. Okay, that's all we have for you. Uh, thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, there should be an email address. Des Moines University Radiology offers imaging services to our patients and outside referrals. In addition to traditional x-rays, we offer state-of-the-art imaging technologies for measuring bone mineral density and body mass composition. One of the imaging services in high demand is body composition analysis, or BCA. Our simple scan measures a person's total body fat composition as well as the ratio of lean mass to fat mass in each arm and leg, the head, and trunk. If you want to stay in good health, this will provide you with a detailed analysis of your body, including measurements of true body fat percentage, ratio of fat to lean tissue, and color-coded body mapping. Because BCA analysis is considered the gold standard in measuring the body composition, people often use the information when planning a workout routine, changing diet, or making a lifestyle makeover. Too much fat can lead to serious health problems like heart disease, diabetes, and joint disorders. Measuring body composition provides a more accurate picture of your overall health than simply stepping on a scale or calculating your body mass index. Many older adults use BCA to keep track of their body fat ratio and markers for obesity. Scans only take a few minutes and use less radiation than you would receive on a commercial flight. One short, simple scan provides a wealth of valuable information about your health. You can map your lean, fat, and bone mass, see real body fat percentage, and identify your risk for metabolic diseases by measuring your visceral adipose tissue. That's the fat on the inside around your organs, not the muffin top that you can pinch. It's a fast and low cost process that does not require a doctor's order and results are available the same day. We invite you to take a new look at your health.